Hello, this is Rupinder Sial and welcome to Spartan Tutorials. Today we are going to talk about a revolutionary technology developed in the 1970s which still continues to revolutionize medicine. It is responsible for producing some of the best selling prescription drugs in the world today and that is the production of monoclonal antibodies. It is based on a remarkable novel concept. So let's see what is it about. Now to discuss monoclonal antibodies, first we need to figure out a few basic immunological concepts and that is the concept of B cells. B cells are the major antibody producing cells in the body. When they are challenged with an antigen and with the help of helper T cells, they mature into plasma cells where they express lots of antibodies against a particular antigen antigen is any substance could be proteinaceous in nature or could be any foreign substance which is likely to trigger an immune response and later on the b cells become memory b cells so they remain silent and are said to be in a quiescent state where they are ready to take on the pathogen if it ever enters our system again. So B cells produce these antibodies which are basically immunoglobulins and these are glycoproteins. So they have some sugar moieties attached to them as well. So as I said, we have the long lived plasma cell which continues to secrete antibodies into the blood plasma. And we have the germinal center B cell, which is the naive B cell. And later on, we have the memory B cell. Now it is quiescent and it does not secrete antibodies actively but it is ready to respond to an infection if it ever occurs again in the lifetime of the organism. Now here is the structure of the antibody. Antibodies are made up of four different polypeptide chains. Two of them labeled in pink. These are called the heavy chains. and two of them labeled in green they are called the light chains they have this typical y shaped structure not all of them are like this but they have the same modular y shaped structure although for example they are of five different types immunoglobulin d immunoglobulin m immunoglobulin a and immunoglobulin g so five different types Okay, and you can actually remember this by remember the word damage. Okay, okay a nice mnemonic to remember this. Okay, so we have light chain and heavy chain, and this is the antigen binding site. And this is called the variable region of the immunoglobulin chains. This is where the antigen binding occurs, and due to the remarkable recombination, which is called the VDJ recombination. Due to this remarkable recombination process, millions and millions of different types of antigen binding sites are produced and different types of B cells are produced which have specificities for millions of different antigens. But only those antigens which are stimulated by helper T cells and which recognize an antigen which is already present in the blood pl plasma, they are selected for and they get amplified and they start producing antibodies. Here we have the heavy chain. Now sometimes in the literature you will also find uh, references like the FC region and the FAB region. So FAB region is this region which is the antibody binding fragment. So that's what FAB stands for. And the lower region is called the FC or the crystallized fragment. This refers to the earlier studies of antibody structure where they were digested with enzymes like papain and pepsin and this led to the isolation of these two forms okay so that's our discussion of the antibody structure now antibodies can be polyclonal or monoclonal polyclonal antibodies are produced in response to an antigen for example we have some foreign protein produced by a bacterium a pathogenic bacterium enters our system 
and it secretes its protein or it is digested by phagocytes and its proteins are released into the blood plasma so let's say this is the protein of that bacterium now different parts of that protein will act as antigens and antibodies will be raised against these parts and these uh, antibodies will be called polyclonal antibodies because they are all recognizing different epitopes these different type, uh, different regions of the antigen which are called epitopes now this is great for the immune system because it can target different parts of the antigen helps in neutralization of the pathogen but it is not very good for diagnostic purposes as well as for therapeutic purposes we need antibodies with targeted and defined specificity and reproducible specificity if we want to develop antibodies for therapeutic purposes or diagnostic purposes so for that we need something which is called monoclonal antibodies antibodies which are directed against one particular antigen and in particular one epitope of that antigen and they are very specific to that okay so that's where this technology of producing monoclonal antibodies came in so here we have the original paper produced by George Scholar and Caesar Milstein which reported the first production of monoclonal antibodies so this was published in nature and we will see how it was working they were awarded the nobel prize in physiology or medicine in the year 1984 so here we have george scholar and caesar milstein niles jern also shared the nobel prize but it was for his studies on theories related to immunology and not to the actual development of monoclonal antibodies so here is the overall idea we take cell culture myeloma myeloma line this is a cancer line usually we use ns0 line for these studies we isolate myeloma cells these are cancerous cells and on the same parallel side we also immunize a mouse usually balb c strain of mouse is used we immunize our our mouse with antigen usually two every 2 to 3 weeks and 2 to 3 times and we continuously check the serum of that mouse so that we know that it is producing antibodies against that antigen usually we also add some adjuvant to our antigen to make sure that the immune response is very robust and then we allow it a rest period of 2 to 3 weeks after this immunization period so that it leads to formation of memory b cells this period of rest is very crucial because these quiescent memory b cells will be produced during this period and after that the mice are sacrificed we isolate their spleen cells and we fuse the myeloma cells the cancer cancer cells as well as the spleen cells which are producing the antibodies with polyethylene glycol followed by centrifugation also so this is also referred to as peg polyethylene glycol it is an agent which helps in the fusion of these cells so what we get is an immortalized cell line which has the myeloma cells as well as the spleen cell configuration so they are immortal and they are producing the antibodies that we want in the next step we select and grow the hybrid cells we dilute these cells so that we select them first so one of the ways to select them is that the myeloma cells they usually lack the hgprt enzyme so this is hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase enzyme and basically what it means is that if we use a medium called hat medium to grow these cells which contains hypoxanthine aminopterin and thymidine these cells will not be able to survive so what we do is we select for cells which are producing our antibodies and then we propagate these clones we grow them in moss culture and then we get to 
to purify the antibody. The purification of antibody is usually done using affinity chromatography. So this is the overall procedure of producing monoclonal antibodies. So here we can see the vats of cells. Uh, these are cell culture, mammalian cell culture, where we grow these cells and use them as bioreactors to produce um, these antibodies. This is a hugely expensive process. So that's why monoclonal antibodies, especially therapeutic ones, are some of the most expensive prescription drugs in the world also. And recently, many improvements in this technology have been made. For example, using phage display, we can screen for lots of different uh, antibody fragments which can be used for monoclonal antibodies. We can also clone and make transgenic mice carrying human immunoglobulin genes and then inoculate these transgenic mice with our antigen of interest so they will produce human immunoglobulin and then we can do screening and isolate our uh, monoclonal antibody producing cells from these mice. We can also immortalize human B cells using Epstein-Barr virus and screen for cells which are producing our monoclonal antibody of interest. And we can also use PCR to isolate a single B cell using fluorescence activated cell sorting for example. And we can PCR it up and then use that fragment to produce monoclonal antibodies. We can use that antigen to inject and then produce monoclonal antibodies. So as I said, some of the most expensive and the best selling prescription drugs in the world today are monoclonal antibodies. They are a big market and they have been very helpful to patients suffering from chronic and debilitating diseases. For example, here you can see uh, infliximab, which is used for rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's disease, adalimumab uh, for rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative colitis leukemia, non-Hodgkin lymphoma. So wherever you see MAB in the end, you can assume it is a monoclonal antibody. So this, this list is just from Wikipedia. You can see lots of them are in clinical trials and more of them are coming every day almost and getting approval by FDA and other regulatory agencies. So it is a bright future for monoclonal antibodies as well as development of new therapeutic approaches using monoclonal antibodies. So it has been a revolutionary technology. So I hope you liked my discussion of monoclonal antibodies. If you have some doubts or questions, please let me know in the comments below. As usual, please do subscribe to my channel. Give it the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Till the next time we meet, take care and bye-bye.